Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and more. Today's topic in local anesthesia, we'll be learning about the complications. So the local complications and uh, systemic complications. So this is uh, part 5 of our local anesthesia sessions. So moving on, local complications of anesthesia that is first one is needle breakage then the ocular complications paresthesia facial nerve paralysis trismus soft tissue injury hematoma pain on injection infection edema whereas on systemic complications we have overdose and allergy so we'll start with the local complications the first one is needle breakage so this is uh, quite rare because of uh, using uh, disposable needles but uh, if it happens it is uh, due to mainly because of bending of needles if you are trying to bend the needle for any purpose the chances of breakage then it could be due to sudden unexpected movement of the patient or sometimes uh, the entire length of the needle inserted into the soft tissue and uh, we suddenly move or the patient tries to move there are chances of breakage and use of smaller needles that is 40 gauge uh, needles we are using there are chances of breakage so how do we prevent this the first thing is uh, always use uh, large gauge needles especially for IA and B and posterior superior alveolar nerve block and use always uh, long needles and do not insert the needle into tissues to its hub so completely we should not insert into tissue and do not redirect a needle once it is inserted into tissue so dear uh, redirecting is always uh, comes uh, with our IA and B so it should be done cautiously because there are chances of breakage so we can uh, manage it uh, because if the needle breakage is visible uh, we need to keep the patient uh, calm and instruct the, instruct the patient not to move and keep his mouth open and it can be removed using a hemostat or a intubation forceps if it is not visible uh, we can uh, refer the patient to uh, for the surgically uh, removing this and before that we can take an x-ray and confirm it that is needle breakage the second one is ocular complications so there are chances of temporary blindness pupillary dilation uh, droopy eyelid or double vision because of this local anesthesia and the cause is orbital injunction that is the injection into the orbit through the inferior orbital fissure so it, uh, it is uh, causing damage and there are chances of ocular complications. So prevention, uh, we need to aspirate before the injection and we need to inject very slowly. So if any complications either, we can uh, treat it by telling the patient that this is a transient, this is a temporary problem and cover the affected eye with gauze dressing and refer the patient to an ophthalmologist and we need to keep a regular follow-up the third one is paresthesia paresthesia the main cause is trauma to the nerve while uh, giving a block or injection so local anesthesia sometimes contaminated by alcohol or sterilizing solution and with this contaminated solution we give uh, anesthesia and it results in edema and increased pressure in the region of the nerve ending which leads to paresthesia uh, we should not insert the needle inside a foramen and sometimes hemorrhage uh, with the presence of hemorrhage there will be increased pressure that also create paresthesia so prevention is uh, proper care and handling handling to injection control and cartridge so how do we manage paresthesia first thing is uh, most paresthesia will get resolved within eight weeks without any treatment uh, the first part is always reassuring the patient that it is a transient problem then uh, we need to follow up the patient for every two months so if 
sensory deficit is still more than one year consultation with a neurologist or oral surgeon next we have the facial nerve paralysis so this is uh, we learned in uh, our previous session how facial nerve paralysis is happening uh, that is while giving ia and b if the bond resistance is not obtained and if we are injecting the solution into the parotid gland where the nerve fibers of facial nerve is uh, present so that time uh, if we are injecting onto the facial nerve okay branches of facial nerve that will cause facial nerve paralysis that also a temporary or transient problem so uh, it is uh, mostly associated with uh, inferior alveolar nerve block or the vasorani akinosi nerve block so if we can uh, prevent it by proper care and handling of injection and give by uh, doing in a proper way with uh, all the landmarks and other uh, proper criteria so managing is uh, reassure the patient and if sometimes the patient might be using contact lens that should be removed so an uh, eye patch uh, should be applied to affected eye or manually close the lower eyelid periodically to keep the cornea lubricated next we have trismus trismus is a pain and difficulty of opening uh, of an after the posterior superior alveolar or inferior alveolar nerve block so it is 1 to 6 days after the treatment it is most commonly seen causes are the trauma to the muscles or blood vessels in the infra temporal fossa so local anesthetic solution contaminated by alcohol or any other sterilizing solution produce irritation to the muscle and there will be also a low grade infection so we can prevent it by using sharp sterile or disposable needle and proper care of uh, proper care and handling of this uh, cartridge and always try to do the procedure as a atraumatic so management uh, trismus management uh, we can uh, with heat therapy warm saline drinks uh, we can give analgesics like aspirin then uh, muscle relaxants uh, if necessary such as uh, diazepam then 10 mg uh, twice a day then physiotherapy for 5 minutes uh, every 3 to 4 hours if there is infection we can give antibiotics for 7 days improvement start within 2 to 3 days and recovery will be done uh, in a range of 4 to 20 weeks so surgical intervention uh, might be required in some cases so next we have the soft tissue injury so that is trauma to lip or the tongue caused by biting or chewing these tissues while still anesthetized especially with children So it is most commonly seen uh, when I and B nerve block where the tongue and lip will be anesthetized and patient won't realize it. So always keep a cotton roll uh, between the lips and teeth. Warn the patient, and self-aware and warning sticker should be given uh, for the parents to notice it. Soft tissue injury uh, we can manage it uh, by providing analgesics. If for pain and antibiotics if there is any infection warm saline drinks to aid in decrease the swelling and petroleum jelly to cover the lesion and minimize the irritation then we have hematoma so hematoma is a effusion of the blood into extra vascular spaces which can result from uh, damaging of a blood vessel so caused by uh piercing to artery or vein by, uh, when giving the injection so most commonly occur with inb and posterior superior alveolar nerve block so this hematoma will be seen 7 to 14 days so prevention is understanding uh, the proper anatomy of uh, nerve and its surrounding structures use shorter needles for posterior superior alveolar nerve then minimize the number of needle penetration never use a needle as a probe in the tissue and management we can uh, give direct pressure on the site of bleeding apply cold moist towels to affected area each 20 minutes and advise the patient about soreness and limitation of the mouth opening possibly so we should uh, educate the patient 
regarding the complications and next we have the pain on injection so pain on injection causes by the careless injection of the palatal injection is always uh, painful and dull uh, dullness of the needle because of the multiple injection also create pain and rapid deposition also will result in pain so always uh, we should adhere to proper techniques uh, and always we should use sharp needles that is nowadays there is no reusage of needles we are using only uh, disposable syringes and needles uh, we can uh, use topical anesthetics before giving injection inject slowly next we have infection infection uh, the, the main cause is the contamination of the needle now, now it is very rare because as I said it is uh, disposable needles are being used nowadays the reusage of needles is uh, almost not there in any of the uh, dental clinics so before that uh, we had disposable needle and glass cartridge that time this was a common thing infection so if infection is there we can manage it with antibiotics such as penicillin and last one in local complication the edema the main cause is uh, trauma infection allergy hemorrhage injection of uh, injection of irritating solution that is alcohol or cold solution we can manage it by just giving analgesics for pain and if the large edema is there we can uh, prescribe antibiotics now let's move on to systemic uh, complication first one is overdose so overdose uh, reaction is occurring when the drug access to the circulatory system so normally there is constant absorption of the drug from its site of administration into the circulatory system and a steady removal from the blood by the liver but uh, if overdose is happening there will be symptoms in the body so what are the predisposing factors so patient factors and drug factors are there patient factors uh, we have age weight medications gender presence of disease genetics mental attitude so regarding age, uh, the function of absorption, metabolism and excretion are diminished in older age. Okay, old age, it is a problem. So the increasing the half-life of the drug in circulation of blood and weight, uh, greater body weight, we require larger dose. And people who are under medication are also should be uh, uh, considered before giving injection. Uh, such as uh, phenytoin, quinidine, uh, such thing uh, has a uh, effect on our local anesthetic. Then regarding the gender, so renal functions during pregnancy may impair, leading to increased local anesthesia blood level. So we need to be careful when giving injection for pregnant women. Then presence of any kind of disease such as hepatic, renal, heart failure. So in this case, uh, there are chances of increase in uh, anesthesia blood level and genetics also is there. Uh, some of the deficiency of enzymes such as pseudocholinesterase and mental attitude. Patients who are fearful, they need large dose and uh, in such patients, we need to uh, make the patient first uh, relax and then provide the dosage. Uh, regarding the drugs, so we were talking about the patient factors in overdosage, the predisposing factors. So in drug factors, we have first thing is uh, vasoactivity, that is the vasodilating properties of LA. So short duration uh, of clinical anesthesia uh, and increased blood level of uh, local anesthesia will uh, create vasodilation. And concentration, lower concentration should be given, and dose, smallest dose should be given. So, in the drug factors, the first one is vasoactivity. So, vasodilating properties of LA leads to shorter duration of clinical anesthesia and increased blood level of LA. And concentration, lower concentration should be given, dose, smallest dose should be given. 
so route of administration uh, should be careful about the intravascular injection so rate of injection should be slow and vasoconstrictors uh, which should decrease the absorption of the drug if vasoconstrictor is not there there will be rapid uptake so how do we prevent it use of aspiration syringe need use a needle no smaller than 25 gauge aspirate in at least two planes before injection and always give slow injection so clinical manifestation uh, will be uh, the apprehension uh, there will be slurred speech there will be excitability uh, sweating vomiting failure to follow commands elevated blood pressure heart rate and respiratory rate Uh, there are chances of uh, tonic clonic seizure cns depression or myocardiac depression and cardiac arrest is also there so management uh, for mild onset uh, and severe onset we can uh, manage it differently so the basic emergency management is first thing is uh, proper positioning this is a synonym p c a b d that is positioning circulation airway breathing and definite care so for mild overdose for mild overdose we need to give p c a b that is uh, first reassure the patient administer oxygen then uh, monitor and record the vital signs we can give iv anti convulsants such as diazepam uh, it is an optional and we can go for emergency medical assistance so in cases of mild overdose that is patient is conscious and it is slow onset that is greater than 5 minutes so in that case we need to reassure the patient and administer oxygen via nasal canal monitor and record vital signs and we can give iv anti convulsants that is diazepam 5 mg per minute but only uh, if required it is optional and if it is uh, greater than 15 minutes that is a onset it's a very slow onset reassure the patient then oxygen the same procedure oxygen via nasal canal monitor the vital signs but the iv anti convulsants is mandatory and before discharging we can uh, take for medical assistance severe overdose that is patient is unconscious so in that case that is rapid onset within 1 minute we need to uh, first protect the patient uh, then we uh, need to immediate ask for the emergency medical assistance we need to start the vls that is a basic life support and iv anti convulsants should be given immediately then if the severe overdose where patient is unconscious with slow onset that is 5 to 15 minutes first of all we need to give anti convulsants that is uh, through iv diazepam or midazolam and ask for uh, medical assistance uh, bls and also along with we should give vasopressors and iv fluids that is uh, the first one overdose age now we have the allergy allergy uh, that is hypersensitive state acquired through exposure to a particular allergen so allergic reactions cover a broad spectrum of clinical manifestation ranging from mild and delayed response uh, occurring as long as 48 hours after exposure to allergen or to immediate and threatening reaction develop within seconds of exposure so what are the predisposing factors so predisposing factors could be the first one is uh, sodium bisulfate sodium bisulfate could be a allergic predisposing factor and uh, epinephrine epinephrine then latex so these uh, could be predisposing factors so the clinical manifestation basically there will be urticaria and angioedema urticaria and angioedema will be there 
then clinical manifestation there will be bronchospasm such as uh, dyspnea wheezing flushing cyanosis perspiration tachycardia and respiratory distress uh, sometimes extension of edema to the larynx uh, it could be a life threatening emergency for generalized anaphylaxis uh, there will be skin reactions smooth muscle spasm of git and uh, bronchospasm will be there respiratory distress cardiovascular collapse so management uh, skin reaction uh, we can uh, expect uh, a delayed reaction or immediate reaction for respiratory reaction there will be bronchospasm and laryngeal edema for skin reaction if it is a delayed one uh, our pcab will be like uh, first oral histamine blocker 50 mg diphenylhydrine or chlorpheniramine should be given and observe the patient for 1 hour then medical consultation and if patient is drowsiness not allowed to leave the clinic as a patient to uh, rest for a while so for immediate reaction so we should uh, first administer epinephrine 0.3 mg uh, intramuscularly then intramuscular histamine blocker then we can ask for medical consultation and observe for 1 hour and prescribe oral histamine blocker for 3 days so for respiratory problem uh, we should administer oxygen then epinephrine and similarly uh, the histamine blocker and prescribe oral histamine for 3 days for laryngeal edema also we should follow this epinephrine uh, histamine blocker and sometimes we need crico thyrotomy that is very rare cases and uh, generalized anaphylaxis uh, if the patient is unconscious we should uh, follow this epinephrine oxygen uh, checking vital signs and intramuscular histamine blocker and corticosteroids uh, that is all about uh, complications of local anesthesia so we learned the complications uh, in two category one is a local complication and second one is systemic complications local complications uh, we have uh, needle breakage ocular complications paresthesia fa- facial nerve paralysis trismus soft tissue injury hematoma pain on injection infection and edema whereas in systemic we have just two overdose and allergy but you need to explain it in detail overdose and allergy Uh, how to manage it how to prevent it what are the uh, drugs used and should follow this uh, pcap uh, code so in overdose uh, there will be predisposing factors uh, that is uh, drug factors and patient factors and also uh, we have clinical manifestations and manage in different category that is a mild overdose and severe overdose in mild overdose we have slow onset that is uh more than 5 minutes and more than 15 minutes and rapid onset is also there within 1 minute and 5 to 15 minutes and we need to write about the management and regarding the allergy uh we have uh, the clinical manifestations and also the skin reaction respiratory and generalized anaphylaxis and also the uh management accordingly so this is a very commonly asked question uh it could be asked a short essay or a long essay So hope you understood the complications of local anesthesia. So I'll come up with a new topic in oral surgery. Thank you.